The frequency table we made in the last section is a good start at organizing our data and getting a better feel for the complete distribution of scores. But data visualizations, charts, graphs, and much more are easier to read and much more information dense, which is a good thing. We'll start by looking at one of the simplest but most effective visualizations available, the bar chart. Most statistical programs are able to make bar charts from raw data, but if you're going to use a spreadsheet or make one by hand, then you need to create the frequency table first. I'll first create an empty table with two columns. Then I'll label those two columns as education level and percent of US adults. Now I'll fill in the education levels on the left going from no high school at the bottom to graduate degree at the top. Then on the right, we'll fill in the percent of US adults who finished at each level of education. For no high school, that's 10%, on up to 7% with graduate degrees. But we've already seen frequency distribution tables like this. Our goal here is instead to create a bar chart. But let me start by showing you what not to do. Some people think bar charts are much too boring and need to be spiced up, and sometimes that leads to disasters. Like this. I made this chart as a combination of all the horrible things that I have actually seen people do in their efforts to make fancy charts. Let's zoom in so we can see the full, awful nature of this. Here are some of the problems. The background colors are distracting, as are the two shadows behind the entire chart. The background image is distracting, the textures on the bottom provide poor contrast for the cones. Instead of bars, cones with elliptical bases are used, making it hard to see the top of the cone, which is the most important part. The cones are all visually different. Some have patterns, some have gradients, some have textures, and some have photos. The view is almost straight down, so it's hard to see how tall the bars are. The false third dimension separates the cones from the wall, so again, it's hard to see how tall they actually are. There are no grid lines on the walls to line up with the numbers on the axis. The font on the axis is so small as to be unreadable. There are numbers on the axis for every percentage point, and although it may be too hard to see, the numbers on the axis start at 8%, which puts the grad degrees 7% underground and invisible. The range stops before the highest value. The cones are arranged by alphabetical order, etc., etc., etc. The moral of this story, which applies as much to statistical charts as it does to many other things in life, is this. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it. Exercise some judgment and restraint, please. A better version of this chart, and you'd have to work hard to make it worse, might look like this. This chart has several advantages. The flat 2D layout is much easier to read. There are no distracting colors. By laying the bars out horizontally, it's much easier to read the labels. The bars are in a logical order by level of education. The scale starts at zero, has a reasonable number of reference lines. It's extremely easy to see which groups are higher and which are lower. The first bar chart was a lot better at grabbing your attention, but the second one is a lot better informing, which after all is the purpose of statistical graphics.